It's pretty hard to deal damage without hitting your shots, and it's pretty hard to win games without dealing damage. Now, I know, I know, that might seem obvious, but we all could use some improvement in our aiming skills, and today, that's gonna be what we are covering. What's going on, guys? My name is Valued, and I wanted to let you guys know that we finally launched an Apex Legends Discord server. There, you can find teammates, compete in tournaments, take part in giveaways, and so much more. The link will be in the description below. Before we take a deep dive into the best practices for you to quickly improve your aim, we have got to make sure we talk about sensitivity. Having too high or too low of a sense can be a game breaker, but what's most important is that it's a sensitivity that you are comfortable with. We have a ton of videos going in depth on how to fine tune your sense, whether you're mouse and keyboard or controller. So if you're having trouble with this, be sure to check them out in the description below. But for a TLDR, just make sure you find a sensitivity that seems to work well and stick with it. Aim is all about muscle memory, and you don't want to change this very often because it can completely throw off your game. If you find yourself having a hard time tracking opponents at range, then maybe try dialing your sense back a bit. And if you're feeling slow in closer range gunfights, unable to keep up with the movement of other players, maybe you need to bump it up a little bit. But that's just a TLDR. Make sure to check out the other videos for a much more in-depth description. All right, guys. So regardless of your sense, there is one tactic that will make target acquisition so much easier, and that is crosshair placement. While this doesn't help you control recoil or track enemies, what it does do for you is set up success before you ever fire a single shot. Getting used to always keeping your crosshair controlled and ready for any action coming your way is the key to hitting your first couple of shots quickly. If you're pushing a building or simply know where a fight's coming from before ever needing to aim down sights, you should have your screen centered at about the level of an enemy's head. This will make your target acquisition much easier and keep you from having to make micro adjustments before you ever shoot a shot. This goes for everything in the game, including looting and pinging but you should always have your crosshairs preemptively placed where you're going to need to perform an action. Having good crosshair placement is the key to succeeding in gunfights, and it's a really common practice between every pro player. And speaking of pro players, if you guys are looking for the best coaching and courses, then look no further than ProGuides.com. There, you'll find coaches and in-depth courses with some of the best players in the world. The link will be in the description below. Check it out, guys. All right, guys, while we're on the subject of crosshair placement, in close range gunfights, this can literally give you a free head start on the gunfight, especially if you get comfortable with hip firing. Hip fire in Apex is very strong, and at close ranges, you should almost always be looking to mix in some hip fire here and there. If you round a corner on an enemy, have good crosshair placement, and hip fire instead of taking the time to ADS, you will get a lot of damage off very quickly. Most automatic weapons will have surprisingly good accuracy at close ranges without ever needing to aim down your sight. Not to mention that you're much more mobile when hip firing than when you have to have your sight pulled up. With the massive movement speed decrease you receive when aiming, hip firing gives you the ability to strafe or reposition much faster. And one more hip fire tip guys, shoot first, scope second. In so many close range fights, I see players waiting for their sight to come up before taking a single shot. But with how accurate hip fire is, oftentimes you can start shooting before you even have to ADS. Aiming is way more than just hitting long range shots with your sight. Good aim is knowing what sort of aim is best for what situation, and you can get a lot of free damage if you just accept the fact that hip fire is very strong. The mobility you gain by staying unscoped until you absolutely need to cannot be understated. All too often, players will get into fights and just sit in their sights, trying to desperately hit shots. This can be really tough to pull off, and if you do this, a player with better understanding of the game's movement and aim mechanics will outplay you. The key here is to understand that ADS move speed decreases as we just discussed, and adapt to it. Don't get me wrong, if you have a clear angle on a player and you're in a safe spot to ADS and beam them, don't hesitate. But if you're at a numbers disadvantage or you need to be on the move to dodge shots or abilities, be careful about when and why you're aiming. It can be tough to aim and hit shots on close range enemies who are moving a lot. So not only does hip firing help you stay mobile, but it's gonna help you hit way more shots on these close range mobile targets as well. Another big mistake players make is not adjusting their aim for the micro movements that they make in fights. For example, 
We mentioned how OP the extra movement speed when hip firing can be versus aiming down sights. Well, if you don't adjust your aim for this extra movement speed, it can actually just hurt you more than it helps. Strafing is very powerful in Apex, but if you strafe without adjusting your aim for your strafe, you often will just miss your shots, leading to the strafe hurting you more than it helps. Gotta be comfortable with strafing, crouch spamming, and other sorts of avoidance movement while still landing your shots consistently. All right, guys, another one of the easiest ways to improve your aim is simply to know all the weapons inside and out. Before we even get to actually using these weapons, it's important to have a firm grasp on their strengths and weaknesses. Apex has you swapping between at least a couple different guns throughout every single game, and being able to understand the role of each gun is important when it comes to hitting your shots. At the surface level, you should be using weapons that fit the ranges you're fighting at. Look, we can all hit a few shots at ridiculously long ranges with an R3 or a flatline. But if your gun isn't kitted for these long range fights, it's only natural to miss a bunch of your shots. If you're trying to use an R301 with a 1x sight and no barrel stave to beam players you can barely see, of course you're gonna miss a lot of shots. So it's important to be realistic with yourself and don't get down because you can't perfectly track a player hundreds of yards away with your AR and no attachments. Most of the high level streamers and pros that you see doing this have thousands of hours on the game and have dialed in their settings an insane amount so well that they can make suboptimal situations work out in their favor. Rather than trying to outplay the game itself by taking these gunfights with handicaps, Understand the strength of each weapon and kit it out correctly for its strengths. Got an R301 with a purple stabilizer? Well, you can get away with throwing a 3x on it and taking some long range shots. If you haven't found a stabilizer yet though and you only have a 1x, well, it looks like this gun is only good for medium and close range until you get some better attachments. You should be going through the game with a progressing mindset towards your loadout, constantly adjusting it and understand that weapon setup you currently have and what your lethal ranges are. Loadout discussions are a different video, but the bottom line is if you're looking to improve your aim, always choosing the best tool for the job given the situation will make aiming so much easier and it'll cut out the frustrating gunfights where you just can't hit a shot because you're using a weapon ill-suited to the situation. While we're on the topic of getting to know your weapon, learning the recoil pattern of all the guns in the game is another piece of base knowledge that is a must have to develop great aim. While tracking your opponent and having a weapon that excels in the ranges you're fighting at is key, the moment you start firing your gun, that recoil is gonna kick in. Having a deep understanding of the recoil patterns will allow you to adjust your aim to account for this, leading to you landing way more shots. Whether you're on M&K or controller, recoil control is the difference maker in a lot of your gunfights, especially at longer ranges. Learning to control the recoil of each gun will not only make you feel more comfortable with every weapon, but will allow you to get the most out of every single gun you're using. A great example of this is the flatline. This weapon is super strong in the right hands, but it can be very difficult to hit shots for new players that haven't gotten the recoil down. While just about anyone can hit close range shots, when you're in a medium to long range gunfight, if you don't understand the recoil pattern of this weapon, you will miss a lot of your shots. This video isn't about recoil though, so if you wanna figure out how to master it, make sure to check out our recoil guide in the description below. All right guys, I know you've heard this one from me a few times, but get into the firing range. There is nothing that will make you improve at aiming faster than some good old fashioned practice, and the firing range is the ultimate place for it. Get creative and set up little drills for yourself to improve what you've been struggling on. Do you need to get used to recoil patterns? Well, shoot some bots at different ranges, trying to consistently one clip them. Be sure to try this out without good attachments, as normally guns are a whole lot easier to use with a high level barrel stabilizer. Are you having trouble acquiring your target quickly out of movement? Well, practice moving around the firing range, focusing on good crosshair placement and snapping quickly onto dummies as you finish your movement. The firing range is what you make it, and there are plenty of tools in here to allow for very fast improvement. Be creative and serious about where your weaknesses lie, put the time in required to feel more comfortable, and the improvement will come. Trust me guys, I say it every video for a reason. And guys, speaking of getting comfortable, you need to do this with the entire game before you can truly become an aim master. Only when the main aspects of the game, from dropping to looting to understanding the current map are completely understood, will you have the ability to transition your great aim into winning gunfights. 
Apex has a lot of game knowledge that takes a long time to get used to. And if you're constantly having to think about all the variables in a game, you just aren't going to be comfortable enough to perform at your best in your gunfights. The bottom line is that nerves do affect your play, and getting a ton of reps on every aspect of the game, but especially fighting, will better prepare you for anything that your opponents can do. Once you have a firm understanding of the game, you are going to have more brain power to put towards winning fights and focusing on your aim, as well as less nerves when fights get hectic. And as our community knows, they can be pretty hectic. There is an infinite amount of discussion we could have around becoming a better aimer and hitting more shots, and trust me, we got more videos to come. But hopefully today, we were able to hone in on some key examples and approaches to improving your skills quickly. Becoming a better aimer is more than just your sensitivity, or how fast you can acquire a target. It's a mental game, as much as a physical one. And if you take these tips into your practice and into your games, I promise you guys, you'll be seeing improvement in no time. Let us know in the comments below any tips you have that worked well for you, even if they weren't mentioned in the video. Anyway, my name is Valued, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to sub to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.